Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we celebrate the last Sunday of the church year. We are reminded and encouraged that our gracious God keeps us from stumbling in our faith and our walk with our Lord. Even as we wait for our Lord's return in glory, we are secure in the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who provides for all our needs of body and soul. Speaking of the Lord providing for all of our needs, this week we celebrate Thanksgiving, and we gather for in-person worship on Thanksgiving Day at 10 o'clock at Zion. As we have in previous years, we will be receiving a collection of non-perishable food items, which we will distribute to our neighbors in need throughout Oakland via City Team Ministries of Oakland. If you are not able to join us on Thanksgiving Day and bring your non-perishable food items at that time, you may bring them to Zion and drop them off uh, any time during this Thanksgiving week, and we will see that they go to City Team and those in need. Wherever you are on Thanksgiving Day, we pray that the Lord will be with you and bless you as you give thanks to him for all of his blessings to us in body and soul. Let's begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may persevere in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 51. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Jude chapter 1. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear 
hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the power in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, 
and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Oh, well. Hello there, Molly. You watching for me? You waiting for me to get home? What a good watchdog. Man, you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of today's scripture reading. Let me read you the last few verses of it. In our scripture reading, it says, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. That really reminds me of my dog. She's always waiting for me to come home, whether I come home at 10 at night or at two in the afternoon. She's always right, right there at the door for me. You know what else that reminds me? We should watch, we should watch for God to come. And you'd be like, huh, what do you mean we should watch for God to come? Should I sit on my doorstep every single day waiting for him to come home? Should I go clean my room just in case he comes over? Gotta, you know, have a nice tidy house? Not exactly. One way you can watch for God is to listen to your preacher, listen to your Sunday school teachers, listen to your children messages. Well, if one of the few ways you can chat with God and prepare for him, you can read the scripture, go to church, you can even pray. Praying is one of my favorite ways to chat with God. It's a nice little one-on-one -on -one conversation with just you and him, no one else. You can tell him your woes, you can tell him everything that's going on, you can tell him things that excite you, or things that worry you. How about we have a nice little conversation with God? Pray with me. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for all the wonderful things that are going on in our lives. Thank you for letting us watch this awesome church service, and thank you for letting us have a great day with our moms, our dads, and all our siblings. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for watching over us. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So this week we celebrate Thanksgiving. By the grace and mercy of God, we have so very much for which to be thankful. 
And on Thanksgiving Day, we make a special effort to remember and give thanks for all our blessings. Many of us on Thanksgiving Day will eat to our heart's content, spend precious time with family or friends, maybe watch a little football, go for a walk, take a much-needed nap, or just enjoy a holiday in the middle of the week. But you know as well as I do that Thanksgiving is more than just a celebration one day a year. St. Paul wrote in his first letter to the Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances. And again in his second letter to the Thessalonians, Paul reminded them again, we ought always to thank God. Thanksgiving is not just an annual observance. It is a daily habit. In fact, it is the way of life in Christ, by whom and through whom God in his gracious mercy provides for all of our needs of body and soul. But that said, this last year and a half have been a real test for many of us. We have tried to walk the way of Christ, to give thanks in all circumstances, and always to give thanks to God. But it has been hard when so very many things are different, and so many things are more difficult than ever before. More than in some time, people are feeling anxious, burdened, challenged, discouraged, frustrated, and are just plain finding it hard to be thankful when their stress level is so high. St. James was right when he wrote, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect person, able to keep his whole body in check. The truth is none of us are perfect. We all stumble in many ways in our attitudes, thoughts, words, and actions. We'd like to say that we're able to give thanks for all things in every circumstance, but time and again, and especially the last year and a half, we found ourselves stumbling into forgetting God's gracious blessings and complaining about the way things are. Today we are reminded by St. Jude, to give thanks to God that he is always there when we need him most. He is absolutely, perfectly, and faithfully able to keep us from stumbling in our faith. James concludes his letter with a wonderful doxology that describes the nature and character of God and incorporates it as a wonderful promise for us as we live out our lives of faith, trusting in Christ, faithfully waiting his return in glory. St. Jude gives us this promise. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. It's a phenomenal description of God's character, his ability to take care of us and provide for us. And with it comes the promise that God keeps us from stumbling. No matter what pebbles, rocks, or boulders are in our path and walk of faith with Christ, God holds you in his hands, and he is able to keep you 
from slipping, tripping, or stumbling along life's way. Jude reveals for us how God provides his gracious protection in our walk of faith. Jude wrote, but you, beloved, keep yourselves in the love of God. Note how Jude addresses you and me. Beloved, beloved children of God. St. John wrote, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. We are beloved children of God, created in his image, redeemed with the blood of Christ, called by his Holy Spirit to faith and life in Christ forever. Then Jude lists three activities by which we keep ourselves in the love of God who holds us in his hands and keeps us close to him. First, Jude wrote, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. That is, keep connecting yourself to those means of grace which God provides for you, through which he comes to you and dwells in you and works for you, blessing you with forgiveness of sins, strength of faith, and all that you need to live in his grace without stumbling. These means of grace are word and sacrament. Remain close to God's word and sacrament, his means of grace as your source of strength and power in Christ. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Of course, God does the building, God does the strengthening, God provides the grace and the power to continue strong in faith, but he does it as we are drawn to him and he blesses us through word and sacrament. Secondly, Jude wrote, pray in the Holy Spirit. Our prayers keep us connected to our Lord. He speaks to us in his word. He assures us of his promises for us. And we respond with our words of communication to him. Our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of adoration, our prayers of confession, our prayers of supplication for ourselves and all those in need. We pray with confidence, knowing that for Christ's sake, God hears our prayers. And in his infinite wisdom and according to his perfect time and plan, he responds to our prayers in his good and gracious will. Finally, Jude said, wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. As we live out our earthly lives, as we live in anxious anticipation for the return of our Lord in glory, we wait and are kept in the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins and rose again for our justification. We live in the confident expectation that our Lord, who came once in the flesh, humbly to serve as a sacrifice for our sins, is coming again in unbridled, undiminished glory to take his people, his Pride the church, home to be with him forever. Thank God that he keeps us from stumbling. Life throws its challenges at us. Things change and things become more difficult by life circumstances and the unfolding and unraveling of sin in a fallen world. And yet God 
is at work among us and in us and through us by his word and his sacrament to keep us from stumbling until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God and Father, give your holy church throughout the world your grace to serve you with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure to the end. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have departed this life in faith, especially those whom we now name before you silently in our hearts. Blessed be their memory, and blessed are you for granting eternal life through Christ our Lord. As we see the signs of our Lord's second coming, Grant that we would not lose heart, 
but be faithful unto death and receive the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know all our anxieties and fears. Grant to those troubled in mind and spirit the strength to cast every care on you. According to your will, give them quietness of heart and a firm trust in the mercy you have shown us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make the leaders of our nation to walk in the way of justice and truth, that they may use the power vested in them to protect the weak and innocent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice with Dr. Robert Glazier, who on Thursday, November 18th, was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award for his 56-year career at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory as a biophysicist senior scientist and professor at UC Berkeley. We thank you, Lord, for blessing Bob with the knowledge, wisdom, and gifts to accomplish tremendous advancements in the field of cryogenic electron microscopy, among many other achievements. Bless Bob with joy and satisfaction in his lifelong work to your glory and for the benefit of humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Pilgrim Lutheran Church in Oakland as they hold their final worship service as a congregation on Thanksgiving Day. We thank you, Lord, for the nearly 62 years that this congregation has honored you and served the people of Oakland through their mission and ministry. Bless the seeds of faith which have been planted and nurtured through them, and by your grace sustain the fruits of their work to your eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are facing challenges in health and those who are recovering, including Marvin Nevu, Tom Poole, Jorge Portugal, and Esperanza Solario. Be present with them, bless them with comfort and peace, and grant them healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.